What's with the photo? Shoot the other day about Ingolos Yao. That's something I've never seen before. Look at it. Okay, right. Starts working. Yeah, but it's following the signs. Yo, yo, yo. Maga figure out. Since part of the man, they've been waiting for him. Got got long little old vulality. Back calling you lost. Not a shangy lost. You couldn't miss his rule. Yes, that's it. So, matter of fact, please. It was never about the wings, um, Fano. It, it's the fire in you. Yeah. And chill, um, Fano. You call it a gas. He tried by all means to call it Nkolunkul because he couldn't articulate our language. But the name is Mkutuluan and Mkutuluan. No, referring to Mkuluga Mkul. Because Mkuluga Mkul is the one we honor always. Or Ukoko Gako, Oko Gako, Oko. It's the one we honor always. It's a system of Africans. This is The Hustlers Corner. Good afternoon, world. DJ Subu, straight out of Johannesburg in South Africa. Subu da Buda. Mta lo kubong witness chwe nile nam shay. Ne kopa khule bo ha or le dutse le ro na. We back once again as usual. Sharp sharp sign. Count of one, two, three. Let's go. Click 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 that like button, guys. Click. Make sure you click it. And then let's go to the subscription button as well. Click. Why? Because you have to become a part of this family. We've seen a lot of people's minds open up and they're saying, some people are saying it's the age of the Aquarius, I could be wrong. Some people are saying it's a certain season. Some people are saying there's just this big awakening that is happening all over the world, especially since 2020. A lot of people were all locked down in our houses. Kids were all over here. You couldn't go anywhere. You're with your husband 24-7, your wife, the kids. And then at some point, some people kind of felt, you know what? I've got all of this time to my hands. My life has been paused. I'm no longer distracted. Maybe now I can take a book and read a thing or two. And some people started diving into different platforms, even on the internet. And then the rabbit hole just started getting deeper and deeper. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the very, very important topic of what other people will refer to as African spirituality. The last time I mentioned such a sentence, somebody began quite a but there was no There is no such thing as African spirituality. There is spirituality. This is and then we the had Mukun Singh coming here from the great empire of Kemet, teaching us, sharing with us his wisdom. And then some people were even watching or hearing that type of information for the first time. It might not be fact, we don't know. But I think such information or such content inspires you to go and do your own research. Because knowledge of self, a lot of us brainwashed, believing in certain things. Uh, and then we're starting to distinguish between information. So on this journey of my own learning, made me to bring people like Abu Mkun Tsingiz. He's not the last one, as we've mentioned, and that's not his last visit. He's still going to come back. Why? Because we are seeking knowledge. Just like we are seeking knowledge from the gentleman that is sitting with me today, Nam Sanjay. I'm just here to learn. I'm not here to talk too much. I'm not here to interview him about anything. Um, it doesn't matter what I'm saying, but I'm just saying, let's take some time and listen. And if there's certain things that inspire you to go do your own research, then so be it. The gentleman that's sitting next to me is a grandmaster of the order called Adona Santanya. He's the CEO of D Aristocrats, honorable title prince of the Sigi from Esoetu, the village. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome my brother, Minangumbiza. Um, because I don't like referring to people, especially on camera. I'm grateful to be around here. Nyaguza um, introduce my bedroom. It's a beautiful thing. You know uh, what we have learned in our lockdown, because I'll go to the lockdown part yeah. when you were talking about it. Uh, we have learned that most people were had to go inside themselves and deep immense within themselves and have time for themselves. What we can call self-love. Some others, they've even plagiarized that name into self-love and use self-love and mistaken self-love as with ego. Because we need to distinguish between the ego and self-love. 
So that is why when we talk about lockdown, it helped a lot of people to reach within themselves. It helped a lot of people to commune with what is around them, within themselves, that is already channeled with each and every element that is moving around. So as much as I would say Mkulun Tsengeza, what is the perfect way of how you would like for me to refer to you on Tlambabantu out there? Uh, I've been called Mkulu at the youngest age. I've been called uh, Baba at the youngest age. And I prefer people to call me the way they want, how they feel to address my name. Because in whatever title we can put, it doesn't make me who I am. You just have to respect the rank. But it's not who I am, it's just the rank. What do you do and where does the wisdom come from? My wisdom say, comes from my grandfather. It's a pass-through knowledge system. It's an oral system that we got. When kids sit around the fire and listen to the old folklores and legends on what happened, how we encounter colonization, how we encounter different events in our history before colonization and before the events since I'm from Wazulu, before the events of King Shagazulu, Malandela, Tulumunyanga, to Ngubane, to all Ndombela, all days of the oldest of ancestors and narrating it into different systems, dancing, art and crafts, so this is a system I am from. I'm, I'm from a system that is passed through oral tradition. That is how I learn. And then I, what we call um, creditation of things, where they call it um, where you affirm things that either they are right or wrong, researching, doing qualitative research. I've been in different libraries. I've been in, in most of the varsities in their libraries, not to study, but to uh, to go and research in their libraries different uh, aspects of knowledge that has been passed through from my grandfather and from the secret initiation I got in Africa here. Your profile says you are royalty, prince. Yes, I'm a prince. We I descend from the people who came from the skies, Amazu, who had claimed that the ancient ancestor brought a rope from the sky. Uh, that is why we are called Uzul, because we used to travel up the sky. Uh, that is why we have the name Zula in, in, in a communal talk. That Uzula too much, you know, or to look Zula Zula Zonkindao, to identify you that you are in the world. The La, the um, suffix of the La, means that you are in the world. La Mshabin. And then the prefix Zu, it may identify the sky above meaning beyond the ispagapaga, beyond the realm of the ozone layer and the ferment. And then when we go beyond that, that's where we call you Zulu. And then when we call you Zulu, it means you have been traveling in the sky. And our sagas and our stories, creational stories, talk about us coming out from the sky and descending in planet Earth. We get the same name being used in the Bantu context when you say Bantu. Ba meaning children, the prefix Ba, meaning children or banaba, children of, that is where we get the prefix of identification within our community in different Bantu languages we speak. And tu meaning the sky from Zu, like Ntu, or the heavens from the name Nut in Egypt when you want to go to Egyptian perspective. And then when you want to go to Sumerian perspective, it's called Nun. So this same sky it's identify as the I um, the place that we from as Bantu, meaning the people who pass through the sky, the people who pass next to the sun. That is why we have people abegolanga. We have people of these all different galactical or cosmetical bodies that we have identify ourselves. Somebody reprimanded me and said, "Sbu, there is no such a thing as African spirituality. There is spirituality." Your take on that? Yes, uh, I will say that uh, there's no such a thing as African spirituality because Africa is a, a rendered word that was used and manufactured, promulgated by colonists to identify the continent that we are in. So I wouldn't say there's African spirituality because there's even diversity of people who practicing different forms of uh, what we say traditional beliefs and what we say colonial belief. And these colonial beliefs, they can be identified as African spirituality since the continent is identified by our colonizers as Africa. 
So there's no such thing as African spirituality, but only thing it's spirituality. Why I will say there's a only thing using again entomology, similarly the entomology I use, uh, analysis of entomology that I use through our Bantu language, that the same word spirit traces from German and it's from the word spur, meaning to breathe. Oh, that is where we get the sprite when it bursts out and it pops. It's a breath of the sprite that bright quench you the thirst. So it talks about spirit. It's a pop of the breath. It means you identifying the breath. When someone breathes, it's spirit. Even in the religious context of the Bible, they talk about God breathing the breath of life unto Adam and Eve before they were created into living beings. So in order to have live a kind of existence or essence of life, they needed to have a breath. They needed to be breath, uh, they get the breath or absorb the breath from God. So it same applies that when we say there's African spirituality, which means there's people who are breathing in an African breath or something like that, we need to put it into content. Like these nowadays, people use words without understanding them. That is why we don't even understand what we are saying. So I will say there's nothing like African spirituality, but I will say there's spirituality. I will agree with the person who disagreed with you. Sir. I love the fact that you focus on the language because language is important. Words are power. Yes. Now you are dissecting or breaking down Isi Zulu or the word Zulu the prefix, the suffix, and just that type of connection. I watched a beautiful lecture of uh, Honorable Rutendongar. Is it Rutendongar? She's amazing. She gave a lecture on the YouTube channel. Guys, go check it out on the Great Empire of Permit. Actually, that is Mkulun Singhisa's platform. Um, the um, Zinzi Mandela Foundation's platform. Go check out that lecture by Mama Rutendo. I think Ngar, I'm not sure. I know you've suggested that name also on this podcast. And by the way, the reason why he's also sitting here, I don't just bring people here, me and Peño or Justice. We bring people that those names you guys have been writing on the comments on previous episodes. Mm -hmm. And his name has come up a couple of times. And the person that made the connection, that's why I love technology, is sitting in Michigan, America. But they made it such that he sits here next to me. Because podcast, the So the way I beg is Zulu, no ma Izulu, no Mugzula Nakona. I break it down Nakona. It's so beautiful because now what you're doing, you're saying to people, no, guys, don't just use words randomly. You must pay attention to words and understand their real meaning. Yes. I mean, I get that a lot, those types of teachings from um, a, a lawyer friend of an advocate friend of mine True. who always says, What did you just say? Best you I said, No, 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 no. So, 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 I said, No. The way the question is, Are you aware of the way the question is? Yeah, that's the way. That's, the, real... that's the same thing, Buddha, that so, I was going to so, uh, 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 say. So, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm Okay, Bantu, I've already break it down by explaining that Ba is a prefix of Banaba when we identify people Bagwa, you know, Vana, you know, it differs how we use it in our context, the vocabulary we use. And then Ba means the children of, it's an identification of people or particular group of people. And Tu means the sky, that is where we get the name Nut. That is where we get the name uh, Nun in Sumeria, in Egypt, Kamit, we get it as Nut. So it's an identification of people who travel from the sky, same as Zulu. It's an identification of people who from the sky and landed in planet Earth. So according to creational story of Kemet, it is said the God, all the gods, the Pantheon, the Ogodod, the Inards of the Kemets, they descend from the sky and then landed in the reeds. We can get the same interpretation of the story being told in freedom park in south africa that when they land in the reeds they came out from the reeds as living human beings and we can get it in the cradle of mankind in Lowe, where they talk about people coming out from the cave living having their own uh, shepherd uh, stocks i mean to say livestock and agricultural life meaning they have their own equipments coming out from the cave been led by Ulowe, the great giant. So these are legends uh, trying to explain 
our existence where we are from as human beings and most kings that is why they were i will spit the pins of the kings that is why they were a crown a crown symbolizing the halo of the sun or the sun to show that they are giving light to us or breathing light to each and everyone hence why it's called umninizan or umnumzan that is where uh, we get the name Numzan, meaning the owner and the governor or the caretaker when we put it into right content. The caretaker of a particular place and the custodian of a particular tradition and customs and, uh, and cultures. Such person is a king or royalty. So royalty is not that you getting paid tax. We pay you tax because it's the tribute of you caretaking of our um, own society or natural environment. So that is why the name Bantu will have a reference of the sky and Zulus to show that the same people who civilize the world, they are from the sky. When you talk about a, a alien extraterrestrial, people will like to say, oh, you are talking about extraterrestrial. I'm like, no, I'm talking about me and you. Because no one will have a, a black DNA or a melanin. When people talk about melanin and mel electromagnetic that produce waves, you can never have a melanin without passing through the sun. There are a lot of people who have lived here in Africa or next to a climate that is high reach of of heat where they are burned by the sun. But that same sun doesn't change their melanin. You need to inherit it through genetics and we inheriting it through the genetical bloodline from our chromosomes of our ancestors it because our ancestors passed through the sun that is why we have legends and sagas of creational story that we are from the skies and when when we go to our stories is that we are not the first creation we are the seventh creation that was created by the creator so there's a lot of times where the creators has destroyed the world. So there's a lot of legends. These are the beans that I'm spilling of the kings. That is why kings will wear even a leopard skin because there's secrecy into that and meaning that aligns with nature and aligns with what we are, we are, happy, we are doing in our life. The same applies to Egyptian priests, why they wear the leopard skin. It is a secrecy. They call themselves the leopard or that is where we get the name a leopard. It's from Leo, meaning the lion. Because in Europe, they didn't know much about leopards. They have no species like that in their climate, no environmental inhabitants. So when we talk about leopard, they identify it as a leopard, meaning the Leo and the panther, which means it's two animals at the very same time. So they didn't have a name for that. That is why a leopard is called like that. But we have a name and we have a skin for it. And we represent and emanate the Egyptian priest, Egyptian commoner, the Egyptian kings, the Egyptian royalty, and the Egyptian gods. Because we are the same characters and the same descendant from that Egypt. That is what I was told by my grandfather. And I had to found that through proper qualitative research. Nkulunkulu, Shikwembu, Sonini Nanini, Mudimu. You know, uh, when we will talk about God, because Sonini Nanini, people will refer it as God. Sonini Nanini, example, this name, it's a name that speaks about the momentum of the existence of now. That is why the momentum is treasured as God. That is why they say, respect your moment. So that in the hood where we grew up, you grew up in the same hood where they speak this kind of particular language. They will tell you that so nini na nini, it's when I do my things now and I will show you what I'm up to. So when you talk about that, you are talking about the great force of the momentum and the presence. And then that great force is an infinite force that you put in the presence. That is so nini na nini. And then when we go to Shikwembu, it's you going to the great one. When you say Shikwembu, you are talking Tsonga, identifying greatness. And then when you are talking about Nkulunkulu, it's a mistaken word of saying Mkutuluane ga Mkutuluane, the father of Nomkutuluan, the one great ever feminine beyond the Nut or Nun or Runtu, meaning the great ever space, the medieval waters that we identify as the space in our own languages. That is Mkutuluan Mkutuluan. 
So when call away couldn't identify Mkutuluan and Mkutuluan and he couldn't understand most of the interviewers he interviewed to know our African tradition in during the missionary program, he tried by all means to call it Nkulunkul because he couldn't articulate our language. But the name is Mkutuluan and Mkutuluan. No, referring to Mkulu Gamkul, because Mkulu Gamkul is the one we honor always, or Ukoko Gakoko Gakoko, is the one we honor always. It's a system of Africans that you honor your ancestors, like the same that is taught in the Bible. It's, I'm not saying we can interpret African system in the Bible, but morality even, it's taught in the Bible that respect your mother and the father which is your mother and your father, they were given birth by their own mothers and their own fathers. This respect must be applied to each and everybody who have lived. Because you don't know where they are. Unless you are like me, you are initiated, you will know where they are. But if you don't know where they are, you are applying faith and the hopes and things you don't see, you need to respect such people. So that wherever you meet them, you've been applying the same respect and they will give it back to you. It's the same thing that is applied in the world. You need to respect human beings rather not. You need to beg them. Like I will ask people why you say, I pray to my ancestors. And I'm like, I pray to my ancestors because I need to beg them. I will beg Sbu for a particular a, a, a platform. Like, hey Sbu, may I please have this particular platform? I'm praying to you. If I'm begging for money, if I'm paying for sweets to my mom, or I'm begging to anybody for anything, I'm praying to them. That is where we go to the etymological meaning of words. The word prayer traces its origin from the latin word meaning to plead not to beg so if you are begging you are praying it doesn't matter if you beg a human being nor an invisible spirit nor a name that is not known only identify in a particular book we've been going through such sad circumstances in case it and may the people that have lost their loved ones so um rest in peace sorry uh the people who've lost their lives, may their souls rest in peace. And yes. very, very sad period in our country. We've had a lot of people raising their hands to assist in KZN. The government relief funds as well have been announced. We've heard some successful business people in the country flying down to Durban. They've been spending the past week down in Durban. Some of them have uh, been donating in the region of millions. So we've been going through a lot as a country, especially in the KZN region. Mm -hmm. An interesting um, analogy is with all of this going on and we're watching TV and we're listening to different people's responses, they're interviewing different people, politicians, and they interviewed a very interesting elder who said, The name, please break that down for us. Um, when and, and, we... and what he meant when he was saying no, when we say islilo siganom kubulan it's when we approach uh, the fall like now we are approach uh, we are inside the fall and then it's lilo siganom kubulan because nom kubulan has already miss umvelingang because they have interrelation in the sagas and the old folklore that we are told that nom kubulan and umvelingang were inter um, married were married and then when they were married, they had all this relationship. These are sagas we are told. And then when you talk about Nomkubuluan, you are talking about the old great mother. It's called Umbumbula or Mbambala in Sumeria. She, she was the great mother who, create, who used to brew beer. That is why we have Umkumbut. She used to brew beer in, in our community. But she was from the heavens. In the old times, it is said the gods used to live with men. So she used to bring beer with men. And they never understand her she been, if you put it in the modern content. And so since they never understood her she been, woman will complain about her. Her name is Nombumbula, Unombala, Nokwaba. And then they had to call her Unomkubuluane. Because when every time men drink the beer, they have tendencies of misbehaving. And then these tendencies of misbehaving, they were called Mikubaye Luane. And everybody knew that Le Mikubaye Luane, it is from the drink that they were drinking. So they had to identify Unomkubu Luane as Umuntu who brings Mikubaye Luane without knowing that it was Umkombuti. 
and uh, that mkombot got most men not intelligently matured enough that is why they behave like animals so in the context so of, in the context so, of unom kubulwane crying it's another saga it's a saga of unom kubulwane crying for his men because his men get crucified when velilanga came to planet earth he was crucified by our own people and these people who crucified him they eat his bones and they cry that is where we get the most terrible climate change that is called the ice age and when the ice age get to exist the only springbok was the one who prayed for us and the hope of springbok brought nomkubulwane to rescue us so in that case there's legends that happened that mvelinqanga uh, was killed by his own sister in the heavenly god as the pantheon of gods some of the sister that is known as malukulu or mulutu or utu the name tutu so sister kill uh, uh, mvelinqang and nomkubulwane was crying and pleading to to found mvelinqang and when he found mvelinqang he pleaded because he was dead he had to resurrect him back to earth but he had to wait for the god of the dead the god of the dead to always wait for a period of 6 months that mvelinqang will come back again that is a symbol of the seasonal change this story still it is told as osaras and uh, isis also known as asar and aset when you want to use them in different content also known as musasi and mbengu the great hunter in zaloyelanga the stonehenge this is mpumalanga i'm talking about cradle of humankind mm. pyramids of giza pyramids in mexico pyramids in sudan what's the significance of these um, pyramids and I asked the same question to Mkulun Tsing is, is there's always been talks about it's aliens that have built the pyramids two questions in a row do aliens really exist and did they create the pyramids and if they didn't build those pyramids who built the pyramids and what's the significance of the uh, alignment of all these um, different structures as Mkulun Tsing is, has said there is a relationship between all of them or amongst all of them the Pyramids of uh, Permando in America, in South America, and the Omeleks in the North and America, they trace their origin from Toambu, or also known as Kulkaken. And then Kulkaken, it's Tlatlamashono when you reach here in Africa. The relation is that these all stay, uh, what we call uh, energy grid, if you want to call them, or energy field grid. They were built by the same people, the Bantus, the travelers of the sky. That is why most people will attribute it to extraterrestrial beings without knowing that they were built by Bantu. And the relation, it has much to deal with mathematics and the science that the Bantu know. Like simple, um, the um, Yakaten in America, it has a, a 108 a, a steps, 108 steps to reach to the highest of the a peak and the 108 step it, it's a distance you found between our moon and uh, our planet earth it's 108 million step of the light years to between our moon and planet earth and this 108 we can found it even between the distance of our sun and to planet earth and these are numbers that play sequently with each other in alliance and the equivalent you can found with the pyramid of giza the pyramid of giza it is says it has the same diameter of planet earth the same ratio of our diameter in planet earth that's the same ratio of pyramid giza with its architectural design so it this is the relation they are deeply connected with mathematical connection what most people will say macrocosmos and macrocosmos or what we can normally say in simple in in the simplest term what is within so is without so the whole entire uh, building they were built in the structure of 
communicating what is within and without how it connects and how all these frequencies are aligned as one like the same the pura madok in indonesia it has 108 uh, pura madok stand and the 108 as uh, we have already explained and when you put one and eight and add them together they make nine and the ancestors of the bantu are nine ancestors like example we talk about holograms Yet holograms be, have been displayed long time in the 70s in our books, in movies, in everything, subliminary. But the hologram hasn't been introduced. And Dr. Dre has made the biggest concert 10 years ago, a concert of a hologram of Tupac. So that gets us a, 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 into clear understanding that technology is introduced to the better safe ones. The ones who are privileged are ones who can access highest grade technology. So long you have money privilege, we are talking about the structure that governs our communities. It's money, monetary system. So with that monetary system, that is why there's technology that is controlled. Talking about simple stuff, the hologram phones, all those things. But there's some secrecy or concealed classified information that I'm not even willing to talk about because it is classified. When Kul Tsengiza was here, he said, Busiso, and then I asked him what he meant. He said, no. In humankind or in mankind or in humanity all over the world, at Abantu Bokala, the first human beings were, was or were um, Tin, Abantabam Nyam. And then from there, he goes on to explain. He didn't go deeply because we only had just an hour, just a little mm. over an hour um, on that conversation. But mm. for me, Begati, Abantu Bokala, Balam Shabin, Abantabam Nyam, Labantaba Bain Ganizen, Bapuma Wood, Gantabelo. Okay, the stories that um, these are legends that we were told, you can get them in the pyramids written in hieroglyphics, written in cuneiform in Sumerian. They are written in a Kelian language in Masonic in Babylonia and in Kush. They are written in Gam and Sagam uh, and all these languages. A saga, it says that white people, they exist from Caucasus mountain. That is why they are called Caucasian. And then in the Caucasus mountain, in the palace, mount, uh, palace next to Greece, that's where they were created and there were uh, genetical interbreeding species that were created by a particular uh, ancestor within our family members. That particular ancestor was so jealous and envious that he was not welcomed by that um, community of the day and then he created his own species. In one of the legends, that ancestor is known as a deform. That is taught by as a deformist. Uh, someone who, who's not uh, well formed in human nature. Um, in, 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 this legend is taught in, in Daba, my children, by Baba Credo Mutra, that famous legend. That is why I'll allude unto it. It talks about Zareri and Zareri being uh, protected by Nelisa. And Nelisa uh, was warned by the Gariba beds that uh, you, uh, Nelisa, what you're going to be give birth, it's a pure evil that will be destroying the world generation to generation to come. So Zareri wa was destroyed because of that, after all the incident. But he was born. And when he was born, he get to attribute his powers through building technology. That is where we get technology in Africa. And they knew about technology. We knew about that and we had warnings that we don't have to have technology because the coming or back of technology to be a doom of our nation or a doom of our civilization or life here, inhabitants, it will be transformed. Hence why there's a changing in this Aquarian area. So Zareri created his own species and his own species were called Abanju, or were called the Doja or the Gandu or the Mavara. They were entertaining Zariri as the king of that species. You can get it into Indaba, my children. It's a second stay, uh, version of the story after being told of Mama and Smagate, the creational story of Baba Kredomuta. May the Koko Kredomuta, his soul rest in peace. Of Vula Mazul. Vula Mazul. Ah, Vula Mazul. Siabonga Baba. Ah. Lalo Ngotolo Lapokon. He sat for hours and hours with David Icke. He had conversations on how he was abducted by aliens in Zimbabwe. Do aliens exist? And what was he trying to um, break down when he was talking that story? That is, if you are familiar with it, 
or any type of understanding that you may have as far as these extraterrestrial species are concerned? Okay, when we talk about extraterrestrial, I want people to recognize that even black people are extraterrestrial before I, I will go to the other species. As I've said, we are Bantus, we are from the sky, so we have names to identify ourselves. That is why Rapela Badimu, Badim Baholidimo. So it's the heavenly people and the people who are from the sky, the ones who are travelers, master civilizers, the master builders, the architecturers of each and every civilization. So when we talk about extraterrestrial, like the Cheetah Uru, no reptilian, or snake kind of looking like, if people don't understand that way, snake kind of looking like uh, aliens. We are talking about a different species that inhabit a, a different place in the galaxy. And it, it's in the Draco um, a constellation. When people know much about constellations and the, the galaxy, and they have studied astrology, they will know that there's an astrological constellation that appears now in, in our time. It is the one that is dominant during this winter time. When the setting of the Orion, the, it will dominate as a Draco uh, uh, a constellation. That's where the reptilians, they are from, who are called Chitauru. And then there's different aliens who are from different places, who are different races. And these different races, they do hijack human beings to do experiment on human beings. And they do hijack human beings to found that the deeper secret that it's instilled within us. As far as I've talked about the internal knowledge that is told externally. So they don't have internal power and internal knowledge. They try to find out how to restore this internal uh, knowledge and uh, straight vortex that is called the infinity in other ways, or that is called um, uh, the great Mungkutuluan, uh, who's the great all wise one, never been known, never been seen yet has existence the all creator so they want to know about the all creator because they've been ma they've made war against the great throne in the galactical epicenter of different galaxies there's a throne of the great creator and they've made war on that throne and the wars are still continually that is why we have draconian systems that dominate us colonization apartheid and all these systems because uh, the systems exist through the power of those aliens. They do hijack human beings, indeed. So now you're obviously saying the aliens do exist? Yes, in, in simple terms. Some people who would be called conspiracy theorists have said, or oh, there's been a lot of reports on the internet over shadow governments of supposedly behind the scenes, them controlling the people that actually run the world. Apparently, it's actually them about responsible for entertaining as What is your understanding according to that? Uh, I feel uncomfortable to answer such question because it has a lot of craziness within it. People will say, hey, eh, we are Sanya, we are Chela man. When we are Chela, we are Sasha. I'm a follower as well. A few, a few, what, few weeks ago, a few months ago. Yo, as I'm going to talk about that. I was about to make that example that was what we are Sanya. Why I will say that, um, similar to Islam, you say, let's hug a Sanya. It's not, it's you feeling that. And that feeling to connect with nature, Baba Kredo Muta talks about it. When one, even I felt it. So that is why I relate with it. When one gets to be initiated, he gets to relate with each and everything around them. They get to be connected. They get to be connected with the end. They can feel a pity for everything. And they get to connect with the trees. And feeling the need to hug a tree, it's not a bad thing. But it becomes bad because you're going to harm it for its environmental existence. As far as if I'm going to show love, in my own tradition, I come with sticks and try to beat you. You'll feel offended. But I was trying to, by all means, to show you love. So the only way we did show love to, in our traditional aspect, we sit under the tree. 
because we recognize that us talking with the shade of the tree and the breeze of the tree when you are at the tree you know there's a breeze so that, la, yes, yes. <laughs> so that same breeze it's a blessing that enjoyed within us that we need to always to embrace because that's how trees they communicate so if i'm going to hold it i'm going to harm it from its growing up environment how it grows no i'm going to distort its growing up no break a little bit of the branch that is why one has to always understand a way to approach things and then when sambane his disciple go for a journey of three days and come back after six days because to reach to the monastery three days after six days when he came back uh, Samusi said, I will open now my books of enlightenment. And then the man in the mountain said, all this time we were waiting for you to open a book or in order to reach my enlightening or my mind to twinkle my spirit, not to spark my spirit, then that is not enlightenment. I don't need you anymore. Then us as Bantu, we kept the tradition that enlightenment doesn't come from books. That is where we say, men know thyself yet we used to write a lot so us knowing ourselves and passing it through traditionally orally it's because you can memorize words to words uh, you can memorize details you can you which means you are using your brain you are already advanced now it's not that we were stupid we already saw the writing system as pre-made that is why white people are young to us because they are using the youngest system. It's so incredible. Sometimes I don't want the information to be too overwhelming to you. But I love the fact that bit by bit, bit by bit, gangan gangan, but sigi slash lang eraser. One day is was the seal. I would like to appreciate your time. And I would like for this to be the first visit of many to come. Because as time goes, I would like for you to, from time to time, become a friend of the platform to share as much information that you feel you can share, especially with our younger people out there. So, and the journey that you are on is not an easy journey. Mm -hmm. um, but some of us appreciate it as we are on this journey of seeking self, this journey of seeking knowledge. Mm -hmm. And people like yourself are the most amazing treasures that continue to share this information. And having listened to interviews of the likes of the late, great Ukoko Wetu, Credo Muto, Magalale Mkholi. He mentioned verbally that the journey that he's walked his entire life, especially in the last years or the last few decades of his um, of his life, it was a lonely journey. It gets lonely because as much as you are contributing to, to society or you are contributing to uh, decolonizing that African mind, the very same African mind tends to become your, tends to reject you. Maybe let me put yeah, it that it's way. a truth. The enemy of the black person is no more a white person. It's a black person. So we fight each other because there's an institutionalized system that has been constructed to fight each other. We were psychologically colonized, we were spiritually colonized, we were physically colonized, and we were environmentally colonized. These are things we are not aware of. We only look at colonization only in a little bit of peace that we, we have a physical colonization and our land was taken. We forget about the psychological part, we forget about all these things. So we'll react indecently to each other where else we bring each other to happiness. If I'm going to give you food, because you're not familiar with food, you think I'm posing you. Same as people, when you give them too much love, they're like, why don't why you love me too much? Because they are not familiar with love. They've been in the past relationship where they were hurt, the, or they grew up in the house where they were not given love. So it, it, it's only based on psychological colonization and aspect of how we were colonized and how we are not even familiar with some of the things that are given to us now. Thank you so much, Nkanyezi, for making me meet this incredible human being. I'm so excited. And I just want to um, read the message that she put in here to make us meet. You will not regret having Mkulu Zamalek Giza on your show. 
he explains the Bantu system of South Africa in the most exquisite way with sources, breakdowns, knowledge, facts of how it's all constructed. He fills in a lot of holes that South Africans have been hungry for. He's a gentleman full of knowledge and we didn't even touch on this topic. That's why I'm saying Stalugutu boy. <laughs> I will come back say, me, I'm at your disposal. I'm at the disposal of every people I've volunteered to different things. Uh, I can come back to exchange. Because normally when we exchange, we need to stick to a topic and have discipline of articulating that topic. And then with that discipline of articulating that topic, we can uh, understand a lot of things. We can break down a lot of things because we all want to learn. Even me, I'm learning. My learning journey doesn't end. And people, when I tell them those things, they, you have a lot. And I don't see myself as having a lot. I see myself as a learning because I'm still being taught by the elders. They still visit me. I still astro project what we call Uget Lozine Tongen and then get to get a lot of knowledge and uh, settled. That is why I get my knowledge from my grandfather. I get it while he was in the world. I'm still getting it while he's still dead. And before I let you go, maybe just the last question. Is there any some sort of um, connection between the Giza name in your name and the Pyramid of Giza? Yes, the name Giza, it's Pyramid Giza. Oh. Yes, meaning the heat within, the fire that is within me. The fire that is burning, surfacing within you, the fire that is burning within each and everybody. The audience out there, they had the fire that is burning within them. Whether you are curious out of your own religion that you grew up with, or you are curious because you want to exchange now a new form of thinking, you don't want this kind of religion that you grew up with. But at the end of the day, it's the fire that is burning within you. And the fire that is burning within you will add knowledge when you are ready. That is why they say, when the student is ready, the, the master teacher, teacher will, will appear. appear. I do know that today I was all over the show with my questioning. I didn't stick to a certain topic, but it's because I was meeting him for the first time and I had my own curiosity on certain um, aspects of my questions that might not have made sense to some of you guys. It was not a structured conversation, but I'm so impressed at how he handled it. And he just, he, I got more than what I actually um, expected. But the next time when he does come, obviously, there would have been a lot of um, questions that are going to arise from this interview and also my own questions where I would have done some sort of research to sort of structure that conversation according to um, topics, which we'll then share with him before he comes so he can prefer, uh, prepare himself. We'll see you on the next episode. This is The Hustler's Corner.